Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge. Thank you. Patty, would you please call roll? Mayor Tinsley? Here. Vice Mayor Javelin? Here. Councilmember Primoroso? Here. Councilmember Marino? Here. Councilmember Woods? Here. Thank you, Patty. And before we start, I just want to um, offer my condolences to Bert and his wife, Linda, for the loss of Linda's mom, Evelyn. Our sympathy uh, goes out to you and your family. Yeah, I just wanted to say something too, uh, Bert. I've known you a long time, you and your family. I know how hard it is to lose a loved one. I just, as Margie said, we, uh, our, our hearts and prayers go out to your family, Linda and the boys. Uh, it's, it's a tough time, I know it, but know you're loved, okay? Thank you. Are there any additions, deletions, and modifications? No, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna go on to announcements and presentations. Ms. Laura. Good evening. For the record, Laura Schubert, Director of Recreation. How is everybody this evening? Good. I am here to present the December fun and festive activities that we have going on in the city of Palm Beach Gardens. Watch carefully. very much and I hope I see everybody at all of our events thank you very much thank you Laura that was absolutely adorable and we appreciate this is one way to get us to all the events feed us chocolate <laughs> this is so cute with a calendar yeah. 
put it up to you. Uh, Madam Mayor, we have a, a, a special uh, guest that is here today. We weren't sure, but it was uh, at the last, uh, we weren't able to get it on the agenda, but we've confirmed uh, a presentation I'd like to call Candace uh, Temple, our uh, public media relations manager to the microphone for a special presentation. Absolutely. Good evening. Candace Temple, Public Media Relations Manager for the City of Palm Beach Gardens. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for allowing me a brief moment to recap a very special event that took place in the city just a couple of weeks ago. On November 19th, the city partnered with the Anita Banks Justice for Corey Foundation to host Unity Day. Our goal for the event was simple, bring communities together and create an opportunity for healing following last year's tragic shooting of Corey Jones. All city departments joined in the planning, which included live music and performances from groups around the region, games, and a special marketplace created for the day. With the help of our Unity Day guests, we completed a beautiful mural that was painted on canvas. Everyone was able to pitch in and paint a portion of, portion of the canvas in the four hours. We would like to thank the community for their support of the event, our vendors for always providing excellence, and our staff for working so hard to create such a memorable day. In addition to the canvas mural, we invited attendees to write a wish, hope, or prayer, anything of their choosing, to be included in what is called a wish painting. With the permission of the Anita Banks Justice for Corey Foundation, we chose a image of Corey Jones. These wishes were cast on simple post-it notes and adhered to the canvas. Through our partnerships with the Anita Banks Justice for Corey Foundation, I truly believe we accomplished the unity we aimed for. We have invited a foundation representative here this evening so that we may present them with the final work of art that was commissioned from Miami painter Phil Fung. May this painting always be a reminder of our community's hopes, wishes, and prayers for your family and the foundation. I'm going to ask Ms. Sheila Banks to uh, come up, and also Chief Step is going to assist me. I just want to mention, um, we also have Terry Banks, uh, who is with the foundation. Sheila and Terry are the aunt and uncle of Corey, and they started the Anita Banks Justice for Corey Foundation.
Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the Banks family, the Corey Jones family, Anita Banks Justice for Corey Foundation, we want to say thank you. Thank you for all the work that um, you guys put in, together we put in to make the Unity Day a successful day. And the photo just, it just warms your heart. Um, we're just really grateful. Um, it's just, you know, the tragedy has just brought so many beautiful memories for us, and we just want to say thank you. Uh, again, just to echo, uh, thank y'all for all the things that that we, you know, put together and created, and um, and it's good to be proactive and and you you bring the best out of something that you know that is so terrible. And um, I just you know appreciate Palm Beach Gardens for being you know to come forward and to be proactive again, and to you know just to give you know this county uh, healing. And hopefully this nation healing, and um, we're we're grateful. Um, it's 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 a bittersweet, but it's but we're but we're we're totally grateful because just seeing his smile it, it brings back so many uh, memories, and um, and we miss him, but we got to move on. We got to move on. Thank you, thank you. God bless y'all. That was a very, very special day. We really appreciate all of your hard work and effort. And I have a memorabilia as well, which are the drumsticks that were played from Unity Day. And uh, what a special thing. So thank you so much. Do we have any other um, surprises? <laughs> OK. <laughs> that was a nice surprise. Um, we're going to move on to items of resident interest and board committee reports. We'll start with Carl. A uh, little to report, um, of course, Unity Day was one of the greatest things to see communities come together. I enjoyed every second. I stayed until after the very end. Um, went to a grand opening on PGA. There's a new credit union. Um, mostly, uh, I spent a lot of time and effort with Gardens of Woodbury on the phone calls, um, speaking with our their association went to had to, did a presentation um, at their homeowners association meeting at the library, trying to fine tune their vision of what they would like. I think we've compromised as, as much as possible, and that that's about it. Thank you. It's been a good month. Great. It's actually been only a couple weeks because we yeah. were just here a week and a half ago. It seems, um, Maria. Well, let's see. Uh, along with Carl, I also attended the IBM Credit Union ribbon cutting. Sorry, I have to take off my glasses to read. Uh, the Palm Beach North Governmental Affairs Committee meeting uh, was held, and we had the, a discussion about the upcoming legislative session, and each municipality has been asked to share their wish list, so I have passed that on to Alicia. Also, we saw the first FDOT presentation for the I-95 North Lake Boulevard interchange, and there is a website for more information www.95northlake.com. Uh, I attended the Business Development Board luncheon, which featured manufacturers from around the county, and actually one of the featured speakers was a gentleman by the name of, oh my heavens, I forgot his name. He's the CEO of Crossmatch, which is located right here in Palm Beach Garden, so it's nice to know that our Business Development Board has been placing businesses right in our community. Uh, also, we... I attended the Parks and Rec Advisory Board Committee meeting along with the joint PBGYAA, Palm Beach Gardens Youth Athletic Association. Uh, we had a joint meeting, which we do about once a year to bring the two, agents to, the two groups together so we can get some information, and staff was kind enough to supply us with information about the fields, the closings, the uh, maintenance on the turf, and the possibility of maybe not only having the 
10U World Series, Cal Ripken World Series, but maybe the 12U, which we'll see what happens. I know it was a lot of hard work for the volunteers that did it. We thank them for their work, and it was a short period of time that they got it all together, and they did a very good job. So hopefully they'll get together and, I, and do it again. And I want, I want to say thank you to uh, George Wicker and Joy Russo, Jr., who have now been appointed to the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. Thank you. Thank you for volunteering. And uh, like Carl and everyone else here, the Unity Day was a, a very wonderful day. And I also want to thank staff who volunteered to be there and how evident it is that our staff is a family. So it's nice that the families all came together. Um, on another note, I met with the developers from Avenir and toured, toured FPNO. Gentlemen, thank you for the tour. And I received a response from FDO, FDOT for the question that I asked at the, we only asked one question, I only asked one question, at the workshop in September. And I was actually surprised that they sent me an answer because the workshop basically is you just give them your questions and they listen, they don't respond, then they go home and do the research. So I, my record, my question was, had they taken into consideration, I'm paraphrasing, had they taken into consideration a lot of the projects that are coming in the future, since this is traffic of the future, and i.e. the FPNL project at the military exit for 95 and the Spine Road in Alton and the commercial pieces that we have here. And their comment, their question was, the traffic volumes for the design year of 2040 used in the PD&E study are based on traffic counts published by Palm Beach County that were inflated to the design year in a manner consistent with the growth in traffic volumes projected by the Palm Beach MPO's traffic demand model. I'm glad they did this in really simple English. That model contains future projections of land use intensity based on approved but unbuilt developments and on development potential based on undeveloped land areas and the uses proposed in the future land use element of the comprehensive plan. We understand that a recent review by your staff demonstrated that the process described above projected future land use that is reasonably consistent with expectations due to the recently approved developments about which you have expressed concerns. For roads to be considered in the modeling of future traffic volumes, they must be included in the version of the model adopted by the MPO at the time of the PD&E study, as was the case in this study. So they actually sent us an answer. And lastly, I just would like to wish everybody a wonderful holiday season, and I look forward to seeing you all at the many events that the city is hosting. Thank you, for, Maria, and also thank you for reading that and sharing that with everyone. I think it's important, and it's something that a lot of people are uh, curious about. Eric? Uh, yeah, um, of course, I, I attended Unity Day as well, and it was wonderful um, to see the communities come together. Uh, staff did such a phenomenal job. Um, you know, it's a little bit more than a year ago that Corey Jones was killed in our city. And um, it's uh, remarkable the progress we've made since then. Uh, our two communities have come together uh, to mourn his loss and to celebrate his life. Um, and I, uh, I just wanted to thank you, the Banks family, so much for everything you've done uh, to create that atmosphere for us to be able to do this for you and for the community. Uh, so thank you so much for that. I appreciate it very much. Um, I uh, also wanted to mention that uh, Hanukkah is coming up, and um, uh, I've chosen a date <laughs> for the, the Hanukkah lighting. Uh, uh, of the menorah lighting. The, uh, the menorah lighting, thank you. Uh, Wednesday, December 28th at 6 p.m. So it'll be by the tree at uh, Burns Road Community Center. Anyone would like to join me? And um, anyone from staff would like to come as well. It's, uh, it's Christmas week. It just turns out that uh, Hanukkah starts on Christmas Eve and ends on New Year's Eve. Which never happens, it's really. It never happens. Well, it moves around. It's, yeah. a, it's on the lunar calendar, and you never know where it's going to end up. Uh, but um, I, uh, I, I hope some of you... Hmm? We'll share the week. You'll share the week. <laughs> we'll share the week. Yes, that's <laughs> unity, right? There that's you go. great. We will, share. we will share the week. So, anyone who would like to come, please. I uh, I, I hope you'll uh, help us celebrate the lighting of the fourth candle.
Okay, that's it. And I'll, I'll provide some cheat sheets of the blessings for you before okay, because I'm going to be out of town, as you know. So unfortunately, I'm going to be able, I'm going to miss it, but I will provide you with multiple copies of the blessings okay. in uh, phonetical spelling so everyone can everyone read them, can, can <laughs> not in Hebrew. Sing along, yeah. And I'll bring the yarmulkes, okay? Okay, perfect. <laughs> And, and the Hanukkah Hanukkah gelt, the Hanukkah gelt. Oh, that means he's passing around money, passing everybody. Passing around money. Just so you know. <laughs> Chocolate money, but it's money anyway. It's, it's good, too. Do you have any anything else, Eric? No? Okay. And Bert, no. Okay. And in an effort not to uh, duplicate what was already said, I just want to wish everyone a very happy holiday season um, and remind you all, as we spend time with our families Please remember that the joy of brightening the lives of others, easing someone's burdens, filling empty hearts, and bearing generous gifts for the less fortunate is truly the magic of the holiday season. Happy holidays and peace to all. And now we're going to move on to comments from the public. And the, this is comments uh, for items that are not on the agenda. And I'm going to start with uh, Don Mathis. And um, as you come up here, whoever is speaking today, just please state your name and your address for the record. And I know you know the drill. Yes, ma'am, I sure do. This, I've been coming to this council for many years. The Central Boulevard Interchange is the first subject I've ever addressed the council on. And after last month's meeting, I felt it was important to come back. It's interesting, Commissioner Marina, that you mentioned modeling, because the interchange justification reports are models. I've been working on models since back in the 70s. Oh, 146 Thornton Drive, Palm Beach Garden. Excuse me, sorry about that. I know it and I blew it to it. Uh, I've been working on modeling since back in the 70s when you had to put all your data that you were just talking about from those reports on IBM punch cards, two or 300 of them. You bundled them up and sent them to Connecticut for a computer big enough to run the models. This model that you've seen, an interchange justification report, I wanna show you two of them because there are two models. You didn't hear this last month from your staff, but there are two models. And the models are here because of one thing. We challenged the first model, which was done in, in uh, the late 2014, rolled out in the early part of 2015. We challenged it. They came back and took our challenge and responded directly to it and noted it and all the questions we had, and they ran a new model. Look the same. Counts in there are as much as 50% different in different sections of the roads. They're all over the place, and it can't be justified for what they're doing and why they're doing it. So when you get looking deep into it, what does your staff tell you about these models? What's the information, and how do they work? How do they handle meeting the community needs as well as what the uh, FDOT is after? You've got to take the model, run the model, and then you've got to get your data back, and you look at it and check it for reality. Does it match up with what's really out there? That's the problem with one of the issues you heard last month. One of the issues you heard that FPNL site, the piece of land, whether FPNL builds on it or somebody else does, has 2,600 jobs in it. That's right. The model starts with square footage, it, or acreage type of square footage. It goes to square footage of a building for a commercial project. Then it goes to jobs. Then it goes to trips. What's missing are the trips. In front of you, you have two things I passed out tonight. One's about Kyoto Gardens Drive. Look at the numbers on that piece of paper I gave you. You're going to put 2,600 new jobs right along Kyoto Drive, and over the period of time, you're going to get 100 extra trips in the morning rush hour and 200 in the afternoon for 2,600 jobs? You've got to be kidding me. Another piece of the pie was to talk about the trips, and there's 1,300 less trips on, Central, or on PJ Boulevard. I can talk to you for 20 minutes on that alone. It is really a bad model. It didn't handle the traffic right. It puts 1,000 trips on PGA Boulevard between the start of the overpass on the east side to the other side of the overpass over the railroad tracks and alternate A1A, 1,000 trips. There are no entrances for westbound traffic in that section of the road. So how does the model put it in there, and where do they go? Because it says if you build Central Boulevard, they disappear. How do they disappear? They don't go to the on-ramps. Those numbers are in front of you, too, in that other piece of paper. That's just the tip of the iceberg of what's in here. You didn't get a very in-depth report from your staff. You're sitting and looking at a project that's going to be a real disaster for the city. And I, if you allow me another 30 seconds, I'll tell you about a conversation I had with the FDOT folks today. They, they are concerned about two things. It's traffic on the main line, and it's the off-ramps off of I-95 that can back up onto the, to the main line. This is the group that does the interstate. They're also looking at the interchanges up and down the entire county. You saw that. 
There are only three interchanges they did not look at, Palmetto Park Road, Indian Town Road, and PGA Boulevard. There has been no comprehensive study on those three interchanges. They'll tell you that. They show you the report. It was done in the same meetings in the NPO. So I, their comments today was, we're going to do Central Boulevard, and we hope it works, because if it doesn't work, we're going to have to come back. The date to come back and do something for PGA, 2035 to 2040. Don, Don, you, do, Don you, you had a map. Um, I have the numbers, but you were showing a map. Do you want that turned in? Uh, this, is the, this is not a map. This is actually the copy of the covers in the first part of the interchange justification oh, okay. report. So this is what you These want are the, to They look identical, but there's two of them, and they're very, very different when you get deep into okay. them. And you well, need to look at all the data and try and figure out what's going on. We're going to turn this into staff so we can digest what you've submitted today. I, obviously, uh, I'm not going to respond on numbers that I don't. Don, you've obviously put a lot of work in this. Are you doing this on your own? Are you representing somebody? I've been working for some of the homeowners and people that live up and down Central Boulevard. And I'm doing some on my own. I'm doing a lot more than what they have me doing because it's, it's just something I've been involved in. And the more I get into it, the more I look at it, I say, this is just really bad, and how can somebody, I know when somebody comes up from a citizen, comes up and gives you information like this, you say, hey, every number you see there is directly out of the justification reports. I've talked to every one of you a little bit about this. I've offered to help, and, and look, nobody wants to see it. You got a report last month that was just not accurate. And Are you working for these people? Yeah, okay. and I'm working for myself. I've done a whole lot more than what they've ever had me do, and that's why I keep working on it. I have to live in this city down the street from you. Yeah, I know. Okay, thank you. Patty, do you have a copy of this? Yes, ma'am, I do. Okay, I just want to make sure it's on the record. Thank you, Don. Okay, the next person is, and I'm, I apologize if I say this wrong, Marty Gromek. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Marty Gromek. I live at 11198 Time Drive in the gardens of Woodbury, and I want to address uh, the Shady Lakes Road project that's underway at this point in time. Uh, looking at what's been done so far on the north end, the way that road winds and kind of has a traffic calming thing that's very nice, and there's also a wall been built there that is right now being kind of a buffer to nine homes. Uh, by building that wall, you have pretty much acknowledged the fact that there is going to be a negative impact with the traffic on that road. And I wonder what is going to happen with the second part of this project, which was talked about uh, initially when we talked about this particular road going through. I think Mr. Permaruso questioned the amount of the money that was available for the road, and I believe the city manager said we've got the money. Well, I see a lot of money going into the north end of this road, the south end where we are, Gardens of Woodbury, and the last four houses in the Shady Lakes neighborhood. Uh, I don't know if there's any plan or any money in the budget to do anything for those people and us. And you have started something that maybe shouldn't have been started until there was the money. And i just like our neighborhood to be treated the same as the people that the nine homes that have been treated the way they've been treated. That road is going to impact us just as much as it did them. And you have left us basically with a drag strip still behind our homes, noise issues, light issues, uh, a, a number of things that were probably the same issues that prompted you to put the wall in behind those nine homes. I'm asking for the same consideration from this council that you gave those people. I would like a wall in our neighborhood, and I think uh, somebody's going to address another issue in this one as well uh, as we continue with this. But please uh, please do the right thing for us, too, if you would, please. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And um, I'm going to listen to everybody's comments, and then we're going to um, try to uh, at least respond after, but we want to hear everybody first. Uh, the next person is David Einhorn. Hello, uh, my name is David Einhorn. I live at 11206 Time Drive in Gardens of Woodbury. Uh, where my home is located, it's about 100 yards north of PGA Boulevard, so we're going to really get the brunt of, uh, of the road that's being there. Just to give you a sense of uh, 
what we'll be dealing with. My, my property line is five yards from that road and my patio is 10 yards. Uh, we accept the road. We're, we're, all we're asking is that for some modest steps to ease its impact and uh, for our community. Um, I should note that several of my neighbors are their back, uh, your, their property lines are even closer than mine. So we have twice as many homes in Gardens of Woodbury uh, next to the road that the Shady Lakes community had, and we're asking for an extension of the uh, of the wall. Um, the, we, what the information we've received uh, appears to be a, a, a false equivalence that uh, to put in the wall where we are, you have to take down the oak trees. Uh, where I live, uh, the, the road involves four lanes, um, a median strip, and uh, landscaping on the east side where there's, no, there's not even any houses. So I would question whether the, this question of either you cut down the trees or you get the wall, I would ask you to take a look at that and, and really see if that is really the case or if that is simply... Um, not thinking outside the box here to protect our community. Um, Gardens of Woodbury is a uh, is a pretty modest community. We uh, the head of our HOA is a police officer. He's a great guy, and he's busy. A lot of us are busy. We're working. We do not have the resources to finance a public relations campaign and to hire lawyers to come up here. So. All we're asking really is for you to consider our needs and for equal treatment uh, to extend the wall down. And listen, I'm a realist. If it can't be done, then to try to take some other uh, measures to address some of these concerns. Uh, traffic calming measures, as it stands now in the plan, there is no traffic calming measures for us except for a, a single crosswalk. Uh, there is no landscaping and there's no wall. There's no undulating road. There's nothing. So uh, we would ask that you consider uh, those measures uh, at the very least. And uh, I guess that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the next person is Scott Wartman. <clears throat> Scott Wartman, 10572 Arcole Court. I just want to thank Mr. Woods for coming out to meet with the Gardens of Woodbury residents. It was very kind of you to do so. I'm not going to repeat everything that the previous residents have just said. They, they talk more eloquently about this topic uh, than I do. I'm just the attorney for the association. But I do have a petition that uh, we submitted to Mr. Ferris uh, that has quite a number of resident signatures. We have 230 homes in the gardens of Woodbury, uh, almost 600 or so residents who believe these issues as it relates to the U-turn and the wall is extremely important. In speaking uh, with some of the council members uh, prior to today's meeting, it seems as if there is a desire and interest in putting some traffic calming measures uh, on Shady Lakes Drive, and that's very important. Uh, this wall that we would like to see built, uh, I'm not an engineer. I don't know whether or not it's possible to, to put it in or not. Uh, I know there are oak trees which don't provide much soundproofing at all, uh, but it's my understanding that the footers perhaps could be placed in, uh, in particular positions as not to interfere with the root system of these oak trees. But these oak trees certainly do not provide any soundproofing whatsoever. So the residents of the Gardens of Woodbury simply want to be treated equally to, to the residents of Shady Lakes HOA. Uh, and the, the drive itself, Shady Lakes Drive, is kind of a, a drag strip, at least for that portion that's adjacent the Gardens of Woodbury, and then there is the, the, the traffic calming measure as it relates to the Shady Lakes Drive Road, which is a good idea. Hopefully, perhaps maybe speed bumps or some other tr uh, traffic calming measure could be placed on that road, which is adjacent to Gardens of Woodbury. As it relates to the U-turn, which I, I didn't address up front, uh, I believe that there is uh, a desire to have the U-turn eliminated, the U-turn that is directly across from the ingress and egress into the association. Uh, and I believe that's going to be made part of the application for the Shady Lakes project. Uh, I'd like to add to that uh, that while there may be signage for no U-turns being placed there, it's also important from uh, the residents' perspective that the lane leading up to the U-turn 
be eliminated as well. And perhaps that's part of the DOT application process, but we want to make it crystal clear to the drivers on PGA Boulevard that that U-turn uh, is dangerous and shouldn't, can't be used. There's been a number of accidents, um, from what I understand, as it relates to this U-turn. It's very difficult to get in and out of the community uh, as it relates to this particular U-turn, so we'd like to see this eliminated. But most importantly, we'd like the, the council to take a very hard look uh, at the construction of this soundproof wall for purposes of sound mitigation, uh, for purposes of aesthetics, uh, for purposes of security. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we will um, have our city engineer help, but um, I just want you to also know that the, the area from Shady Lakes Boulevard to PGA Boulevard um, is part, well, the po portion that's closest to PGA um, will be renovated as well. However, there is a DOT permit, a Florida Department of Transportation permit that's needed um, that has been applied for and um, it, we, were, we were waiting um, for that permit prior to any construction. So, um, but if, if, if you don't mind, uh, Todd, if you would please uh, help address uh, some of the questions. I think the U-turn is the PGA uh, Boulevard U-turn. If you can please address that. Also, traffic calming measures and uh, the second part of the project from Shady Lakes Boulevard to PGA Boulevard so we can see. Good evening, Council. Todd Engel, City Engineer with the City of Palm Beach Gardens. Um, we'll give you a little brief overview of the project and then we'll go into this particular phase. Obviously, we broke it up into certain phases. Phase three, we finished first, which was the 117th, which opened up the beginning of school. We're currently working from uh, the Shady Lake entrance north to 117th, and we're hoping to have that open in early January for the beginning of the school. And then, which is phase two, which will be the, the last phase is the actual portion that will be in front of the Gardens of Woodbury community. This is the area in question. This is the entire length of Gardens of Woodbury. The project is on the east side of Gardens of Woodbury. This picture here is on the north side of Gardens of Woodbury looking south. And then this picture here is just right across the street from the entrance in the intersection of PGA and Shady Lakes. And it depicts uh, the shrubbery that we have there, their current fence that they have there and also the very mature oak trees along the area. The next phase of the project that we'll be doing, which we've currently submitted a permit with the FDOT, will be to add two turn lanes heading out, heading southbound from Shady Lakes onto PGA Boulevard. And also we're going to provide two ingress points from PGA Boulevard onto Shady Lakes. All those improvements will be headed to the east side of the actual right-of-way. There'll be no improvements that will encroach further into the uh, Gardens of Woodbury portion there. And also we are going to add additional landscaping where there is landscaping needed on the Gardens of Woodbury side. So that's already been accounted for. That was already part of the original plans. Again, the big thing is everything's moving east. Nothing's encroaching closer to Gardens of Woodbury and we are having plans to increase the landscaping along that area. This further shows what we intend to do. This is the current intersection of PGA and Gardens of Woodbury. There will be no further encroachment to the west of the existing Shady Lakes area. As a matter of fact, this now northbound incoming lane onto Shady Lakes will become the outgoing turn lane. And then the incoming lanes that will come from PGA onto Shady Lakes will be actually constructed on the east portion just on the other side of the FPNL transmission line. So there's no intention to move the FPNL intention uh, transmission lines. We'll curb those and put the incoming lanes on the east side. Again, no further impact will be to the west of the Gardens of Woodbury community. Here's a little, whoop. here's a video we took of the entire stretch of Gardens of Woodbury, which shows the existing condition of the landscaping, the mature trees, and the actual Shady Lakes Drive itself.
also went ahead and took a small video of the newly installed wall along the Shady Lakes area. Oops. What we want to point out is what it took to actually build this wall along the Shady Lakes Corridor. There's, um, they had existing vegetation in the area. Obviously, we were clearing the area to build a roadway. We actually had to build this wall four foot into our right-of-way, one because of elevation differences, drainage issues, and other issues in order to keep the wall level all the way across. So we had to build it four feet into our right-of-way. We had to take all the vegetation out. We had to go and place catch basins on our property in order to take our drainage back into Shady Lakes. And the actual foundation itself is five foot in diameter. So you'll see a, a wall that's a foot long, but there's another foot and a half that actually encroaches into the neighbors, into the area adjacent to it. That's why we had to push this wall four feet into our roadway and clear cut everything, level everything, and then reestablish the entire area, irrigate and re-landscape. And what you see the area here on Gardens of Woodbury, these trees exist some four and five feet into from their property line into our right of way. Their fence exists anywhere from on the property line to a foot to four or five foot off to the furthest. So which, when you see their fence, sometimes it's actually four foot into their property. So if we were to build this wall, we would have to bring it into our property in order to keep it level, in order to keep our drainage on our area and keep their drainage flowing positively. So it would be significant devastation to the actual vegetation in there, to install the foundations, to install the wall, and we have to reestablish everything, irrigate everything, and re-landscape everything. And the time it would take to get the maturity of what you have these trees here today would be quite a substantial amount of time. Looking at the cost of that, uh, looking at the design, the survey, the construction survey, mobilization, the actual earthwork, the clearing and grubbing, the landscape, the irrigation, the actual wall construction itself, you're looking at about $238,000. That's just an engineer's estimate based on what we just accomplished over at the Shady Lakes portion. And then the one other issue I do want to touch on is the uh, no U-turn at the entrance of the Gardens of Woodbury community. We have added this to our petition to the DOT along with the existing turn lane that's going to come out of Shady Lakes and the two, turn, and the two lanes coming in. And we've added that on there and we're waiting for FDOT's response. We had to go out and do counts to see how many times that's being used. We've applied that to the DOT, so we're waiting on a response from the DOT for that. Another small thing to look at, if you, if you look at how this road comes in, it, you know, again, it's all the way to the west, but that we don't return to that lane that original road cross section until we get to this point here. And we also have another ingress point to the community, to the Midtown project right in here. So it's mainly this stretch of roadway from here to here in which we do have a mid-block crossing that has a crosswalk, that has stamped concrete. We'll have traffic common features and we'll have a flashing uh, pedestrian flasher that'll be actually actuated when you push the button when a pedestrian wants to, it'll, cross it'll actually flash much like the one we have out here Burns Road between this facility and the community center with that I'll take any questions that you have the landscaping that you're going to be putting in the additional landscaping you're going to be um, filling in where we when we did that little drive you're going to be filling in those gaps that were um, where the um, vegetation was lacking yes when we when we did the original design we went in and looked at all the areas where the vegetation was lacking provide irrigation for that but what we did notice is there was a lot of gates in those areas where the residents were actually using those gates to either maintain their properties or come out to the right of way and head to the midtown or wherever they were going so when we reestablish those those gates will be blocked okay and um I guess I saw in some areas where the shrub material was, um, I, I don't want to say hat racked, but that's kind of the term that I use. Um, I'm guessing that that is, uh, I, I have not been on that section, but I'll have to do a drive by or a, uh, that's not a good word either. Uh, I'll have to do a site visit <laughs> to uh, see that a little bit more, but where that uh, shrubbery is, I'd like to make sure that it's, it's still viable and um, able to uh, re generate uh, 
to become a, a, a thick shrub as well. Otherwise, uh, that area might need a little supplemental vegetation. And that is the plan, and whatever needs to be supplemented, we will in the budget. Mm -hmm. But money is currently in the budget as it exists today to supplement that, All that area. All land, the landscaping that's help from that, that point to the to PGA, correct? Yes. Okay. And that's the f what we approved as phase two, which will eventually be phase three. Right. Which will be done when we have our DOT Once permit. Once we get the DOT permit, and then we got to petition the county to move the mast arms mm -hmm. that we need to relocate to build the intersection, and then the, that will be done. Is that permit in? Not with the county because we need the DOT county's, the DOT's permit before we go to the county. Okay. Yes. Okay. What is your estimated time frame? Obviously, I understand you have governmental entities to deal with, which could be a little tricky, but in your um, best guess, what do you think the, the end, when this would be complete, the time in which this would be complete? We're hoping to have the permits in place by March, and then we need to get contractors in place. And then once that's done, then we'll start construction. It's probably about a six-month construction time. The actual roadway construction is not going to be that long, but the mast arms have a long lead The time. intersection itself. Yes, the, and the intersection itself. So we'll probably look in, if we get the permits in March, another six months from now. Okay. Okay. Does anybody have any questions, additional questions? I'm just Google mapped the current view of <clears throat> Shady Lakes and the trees over the street and I can't, I'm not an engineer and I'm not a, a botanist, um, I can't imagine losing those trees, I, that would be shameful so I don't know how a, a wall would go in there and not lose those trees. But like I said, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a botanist, I don't know anything about irrigation so this, it, this would be very hard to achieve with the current wall system that we've installed over the Shady Lakes project. And those are pile systems, so they get driven in the ground and the sheets get put in and then a cap put on those. So there's not large foundations, and it's still going to be hard based on the location of the wall would run right down that tree line. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me also explain that when you drive pylons into the drip line of a tree, that's, this, that's very much the same as root pruning. I'm sure you've heard that term before. So what root pruning does is that wherever you lose those roots, you lose the canopy of the tree as well, which um, would not be beneficial for screening and buffering because um, you would essentially be um, eliminating that whole section of the canopy of the, of the tree, which is not favorable, especially because um, I'm not sure if those are lives or laurels, but uh, it could really hurt the health of those trees. And they're beautiful. Madam Maybe. Mayor, if I may. Yes, sir. Um, did you have the forester take a look at what would happen if you try to put the wall and, and put it in where the trees are still there? What did he tell you about the construction of the wall? Yeah, we, we brought the forester out there, and he thought there'd be significant root damage, and not only that, knowing how the wall would be installed, it takes a crane to drop those panels into place. Right, the boom of the crane. That we would also have to significantly root prune all the, the limbs in the area, and that's if we had a suitable location for the wall. Right now, we don't have a suitable right. location. It is the tree line that's a suitable location. You mean hard prune, which yes. means that they would be gone forever. Yeah, but to drive in the, the, the two and a half foot diameter uh, foundations that need to go in, he said it would cause significant damage and weaken those trees significantly. Thank you. Carl, do you have additional questions? No, everything's... Um I've had lots of questions and lots of times on this, and it really comes down to the tree or the the, the wall. And the to me, it looks like Todd, there's 25, 30 oaks there that are probably 50 years old. I don't know. They're uh, uh, substantial I, amount. Of yeah, I didn't I, count on myself either. But just um, I've drove down this road many times, and I never got out and looked to see what the distance was between the oak and their fence. Um, now, in retrospect, I wish I should have, but it might not even be possible to put the wall in there without encroaching on their property. That we couldn't encroach on their property. Yeah, we're not allowed that, to do that. That's something we couldn't hey, that's do. My that's my point. Why the wall would need to be four foot back, then we can't cause any drainage, negative impacts of right. drainage, so it would all have to be perfectly level. And that's one of the problems we faced on Shady Lakes, because the ro road had to rise because of the basin berm divide. Right. And that's why we had to clear cut everything and level it to make the wall level. And so it did significant damage to some of the existing irrigation or landscaping that was already out on Shady Lakes. So if we weren't going to change a thing, 
because um, we know we're moving the road to the east, but this part of the road on the west side is, is permanent. There's no way to put the wall in there be even behind the oaks without putting it on their property and damaging the root system of the oaks. That would be pretty much impossible for where, where we'd have to put them. We wouldn't be able to do that. Okay. We, in some cases, you'd have to remove the oak tree to get the wall in the location because the oak trees sort of stagger a little bit. Yeah. Somewhere in, you know, on the fence line. And, and the fence line actually, as it heads south, moves away from the property line. So it's a little deceiving. Even if you see how close the fence is to the oak trees, it's a little deceiving because it encroaches out into their property a little more. Well, another uh, one of their future issues was the maintenance of the trees going forward. Um, they don't feel they're maintained. I said we can address that next year or, or whenever. They can call and email us and we can get somebody on it. But um, who's responsible for the maintenance of the trees? Currently, right now, the property owners to the east are responsible for the maintenance of that. But when we come in and improve the roadway, we are going to maintain it to our standards. Maintain the trees. And the landscape? Maintain the entire roadway to the improvements and the investment that the city's made on the roadway. In all of Shady Lakes and all of 117. That includes which the trees. Is, yes, I know. Which is a great thing. Can, I don't know if anyone's seen 117th, but um, we've had a lot of people that were very, very um, concerned about uh, any improvements along 117th. And I cannot tell you how many people have called and emailed and thanked um, all of us for everything that we've done along, including the principal who was very, very, very concerned and actually opposed to any improvements on 117th. And she's very thankful, the middle school's very thankful, and they love, love, love the, the landscaping, the maintenance, the drainage, the paving, and what all of the improvements that were done on 117th. And, and I assure you, the maintenance the city has um, has done in the past and continues to do uh, for all of our right-of-ways that we're responsible for is uh, above and beyond uh, what, what I, and I can tell you this because the other day I saw a, a little pocket of a median that was not up to our city standards. I made one little comment to Ron and he addressed it like within hours uh, and with staff and they like hopped on it and uh, now that section does not look like the county anymore. It, it's going to look like Palm Beach Gardens. So we're very, very uh, happy with that. And, but I'm saying this um, because I know construction is tough. It's very hard to uh, live through construction and, and through th this portion of the project. But I hope it'll go by quickly. Um, we will do what we can in our and as much as we can to make sure it is as painless as possible. Um, we will address the landscape issues, uh, make it look, make, make the buffer look as best as it can as we move forward. We're not going anywhere. We're still here. Um, we'll work with you through this process. Um, and if you have additional questions, we're happy to answer them as we go through this. But I do want to say that we've, you know, prior to you guys being on the council, we've worked um, from a plan point of view. Uh, on this entire stretch for a very, very long time, months and months and months before it even became uh, a public hearing process. But we went and we met with as many neighbors, HOAs as possible. We listened to their comments. We tried to address them in the plans. We had another public hearing, listened to more comments. We tried to address them in the plans. We've even, after we submitted the uh, permit process, after we had our final construction, drawings, we went back and we revised the plans to add a little bit more uh, buffering, a little bit more uh, curvilinear approach because we wanted to, um, to add some more uh, traffic calming. And, uh, and so, uh, so these are the things that we've done from the start of the project to now. And, and, and I want you to all know that we live here, we want to make sure that we, uh, we hear you and we're going to do the best that we can to, to make it um, a, a nice project. And I know Bert has a question as well. Yeah, the only comment I have is how many gates come through that fence from the Gardens of Woodbury side? We could drive down it again, but I think roughly five. Five. I, I yeah. think it's just important to let those individuals know <laughs> that we want to we landscape this thing something you would see in Palm Beach with a seven or eight foot hedge that's thick and all the way down there uh, to provide a sound barrier in addition to the fence, in addition to the oaks if a wall's not done. And I think the realization is those gates got to go. 
and those people need to know that because we want to beautify that whole strip and not allow it to be gate opened and torn apart by people walking through it. It kind of defeats the purpose of solidifying that whole side of the street to beautify it and put up a hedge that might provide some uh, noise resistance for that road. So I think those people, they make sure we notify them of that scenario because those gates should be taken down or should not be accessible from that from that side if we're going to hedge and beautify that whole street. Yeah. Just my thought. And, and that's that. a good point. Todd, quick, quick question. The hedges that are there now, are they near the end of their useful life? Those hedges there, they're, everything looks, because this was taken obviously yesterday, everything's a little dry right now. The sod's a little dry. Everything seems to be a little, my own yard's a little dry. Um, they do need some help. And we realized that during the actual design, and we put in supplemental plant planting along this entire area and where there are bare areas. We've added sables, and we've added oaks, and we've added other plants on just this stretch on the west side of the road. So we're going to notice a thickening then? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and also the irrigation will be improved, I'm sure, at, after yes. construction because that's the last thing to do. The, the city on this entire corridor has committed over a million dollars in landscape and irrigation improvements, and this will not be left out. Thank you. Th thank you. Eric, do you have any other questions? Well, I, just, I just wanted to say that uh, it seems to me as if it's, it's either the landscaping or the wall. I mean, there's just no way that you can do w both. Yeah. And, uh, and to, to, to take down those beautiful oak trees, I know I have several of them on my property. Uh, I, I would it would be heartless to do that. Um, and, and I think that in the end, uh, a wall, frankly, uh, is not going to do much to um, uh, guard against the traffic noise. Uh, frankly, I think the landscaping will help a lot more than uh, a wall, which basically uh, the, the sound bounces off of, of and goes over. Um, and I know that for a fact because I, I, I know people who live along walls, and they told me that. So um, I just I think it's one or the other, and I think this is the better choice, and I know the mayor has said we're going to do everything we can to make sure that this is a, a beautiful stretch of road as, as all of the stretches of road that we maintain in our city. You go by uh, any place that we maintain in our city, it's really top notch. We don't, we don't skimp on, on landscaping. That's why we're a garden city and a tree city. So uh, I, I see no, no way out other than to enhance this landscaping and to move the road as far east as we possibly can to attenuate any of those, the, those, those bad situations with traffic. And I think this road is going to really enhance um, the, the look of, of, of Chady Lakes Drive in the long run. And, and I also want to make sure that we all are under the impression that when the new shrub material is there, it's going to be maintained at a, a much higher um, level uh, at the row that you have in there so that it'll also be a nice thoughtful buffer okay okay thank you very much i appreciate it. i appreciate you uh, responding to these questions okay um that is all i don't have any other cards um under here so we're going to move on to the city manager report No report. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Approve consent agenda. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Tonight, we're holding quasi-judicial hearings on the following cases. Ordinance 17, first reading, Avenir Plan Community Development, PCD, Community Development District, CDD. This means that the City Council is required by law to base its decision on the evidence contained in the record of this proceeding, which consists of the testimony at the hearing, the materials which are in the official city file on the application, and any documents presented during this hearing. The council is also required by law to allow cross-examination of any witnesses who testify tonight. Cross-examination may occur after the staff, the applicant, and the other participants have made their presentations and will be permitted in the 
in the order of the witness's appearance. It is necessary that anyone who testifies at the hearing remain until the conclusion of the hearing in order to be able to respond to any questions. If you plan to testify this evening or wish to offer written comments, please fill out a, co a card and give it to the city clerk. The city clerk will now swear in all persons who intend to offer testimony this evening on any of the cases. I just want to make a, a small correction. I didn't want to interrupt you. Or, sorry, we should interrupt you since you don't have to read it all. That's okay. It's actually not quasi-judicial. It was just a, it was a, a miscommunication, so it's okay. It's legislative, so we don't have to swear anybody in. So you actually don't have any quasi-judicial hearings this evening. Okay. So all the asterisks go away. Very good. No swearing today. Okay. So I guess we're going to move on to Ordinance 14-2016. Alan? Uh, uh, Mayor, I'll read the title first. Oh, I'm sorry. Clerk, read the title. Sorry. <laughs> Ordinance I'm like getting ahead of myself. Mm -hmm. Ordinance 14, 2016, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, amending the City of Palm Beach Gardens budget for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2015, and ending September 30, 2016, inclusive, providing a conflicts clause, a severability clause, and authority to codify, providing an effective date and for the purposes. Okay. okay. Um, uh, I'm going to open the public hearing first. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to ask if there. Uh, I guess we don't need any uh, quasi. So presentation. Okay. Thank um, you, Alan. Good evening, um, Madam Mayor, members of the council. For the record, Alan Owens, finance administrator. Uh, this is second reading of Ordinance 14. There have been no changes since the first reading. Again, this is the standard end of year cleanup budget amendment that we do every year. Uh, with that. I'll entertain any questions, or if you'd like a presentation, again, we'd be happy to do that. We did a great job last month. Okay. Seeing no changes, I don't need a presentation. Anybody else? Uh, need a presentation? I don't need a presentation. Does anybody need a presentation? Carl, you're good? Okay. Then we're all good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. <laughs> Okay, since we don't have a presentation and I don't have any cards on this item, I'm going to close the public hearing and bring it back for a discussion and or a vote. And Madam Chair, move Ordinance 14, 2016 on second reading and adoption. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Thank you. And I just see a, a, a an, another mayor in the audience, and I want to recognize we have Mayor Todd Wadraska from Jupiter. Thank you and welcome. Okay, we're going to move on to Ordinance 15, 2016. Would the clerk please read the title? Ordinance 15, 2016, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, amending Chapter 70, Traffic and Vehicles at Article 3, Parking, Standing, and Stopping at Section 70-62, Stopping, Standing, and Parking, prohibited in sp specified places in order to amend the regulations that govern the parking of motor vehicles on roadways and streets and swales and off-street parking within the city, providing a conflicts clause, a severability clause, and authority to codify, providing an effective date and for the purposes. Thank you, Patty. I'm going to open the public hearing. And has there any, been any changes um, no, no since changes. last meeting? Okay. Thank you, Chief. And the, does it, since it's the second reading, does anybody want a presentation or want to hear it again since we've already heard it? Okay. Okay. All right. Get them off the streets. <laughs> what? Get the cars off the streets. Okay. All right. Um, we don't need a presentation, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Bert just wants the cars off the streets, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> okay, I don't have any cards on this item, so I'm going to close the public hearing and I'm going to bring it back for a discussion and or a vote. And Madam Chair, move Ordinance 15, 2016 on second reading and adoption. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. And now we are moving on to Ordinance 17, 2016. Would the clerk please read the title? Ordinance 17, 2016, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, regarding application to establish the Avenir Plan Community Development PCD, Community Development District, CDD, making findings of fact regarding the petition. 
establishing and naming Avenir Community Development District, describing the boundaries of the district, naming the five persons designated to be the initial members of the Board of Supervisors, providing consent for the exercise of certain powers, providing a conflicts clause, a severability clause, and authority to codify, providing an effective date and for other purposes. Thank you, Patty. I'm gonna open the public hearing and I'm going to ask for any ex partes. Okay, you can't just say yes, you have to say who you met with. Well, and again, and again uh, actually, you actually don't. Oh, that's, that's right. right. I'm sorry. You actually don't have don't to, to disclose it. And I know it was under public hearings. That's, um, it was just a little miscommunication, but I mean, it's actually not technically a public hearing and it's not quasi judicial. So, so sorry. You can I disclose if you want to, but you don't have to. Yeah. Carl, I'm still used to that. I'm just making sure Bert I, no. I like the honesty, Carl. That's very good. You, very good. <laughs> we had to change. That's very good. <laughs> You're learning. <laughs> I saw that it was a quasi, so I thought I saw, thought the same thing. So, okay, we don't have to say who we met with, but you can if you want to. I'm going to say that I've met with uh, Ms. Rosa Schechter, and I did have a, a very slight, minor conversation with uh, Mr. Brian Seymour. I'm just going to throw that out there, even though I don't have to. Um, and uh, Ken, you do have to do a presentation, unlike the rest of the group that was skipped. So sorry. <laughs> Well, Mayor, I did tell him we were going to put him on the clock uh, before, so did you? if we can start the three minutes for him, please. <laughs> <I'm> fine. <laughs> It'd be a record. Uh, I did swear in. Uh, good, good, no good swearing. No yes, swearing. sir. No swearing right. tonight. Good evening. Ken Tuma with Urban Design Kill Day Studios. Here tonight on behalf of Avenir Holdings, um, and to the request that is before you today is a request for first reading for to establish the Avenir Community Development District. Now, just to take a step back for a second, because it's been over almost a year since you approved on first reading the Avenir PCD, which I believe was January 6th of this year, um, a lot has happened, but you haven't had the opportunity to see what's happened because what's going on in the background is engineering, planning, and getting things ready for the future. But I'm happy to announce that the permitting process with the water management district and the county are all going very well. Also, Hopefully within the next few months, we'll be actually making a submittal for the first site plan for the Avenir project. So you'll get an opportunity to view it at your level probably in about nine to 11 months when we get to that point. But the project is moving forward and it's been a very exciting time for all the planning that's happening. You know, these are, this is a large project. It's a 20 to 30 year project. And that's one of the themes tonight when we talk about the community development district. So that's just a quick update on the project on where we are now into the CDD, the request that is before you tonight. Identified in yellow on your screen is the proposed boundary of the Avenir CDD. Uh, identified in yellow, it's a little bit less than 2,500 acres. So the first thing is why a CDD, and then I'm gonna kinda of go into CDD 101. A CDD, a community development district or a special district, the reason why we're headed down that path is it is a financing tool and also a maintenance tool. So the way that our clients have decided to head down this path is they've recognized that this is an important financing mechanism, just as the opportunity is there to have private financing, special districts is a mechanism to allow for uh, tax exempt financing for the project. And that's the path that we've decided to head down. So what is a CDD? It is a special purpose unit local government. The first ones were established in 1980. There are about 600 community development districts within the state of Florida and their, the opportunity for them and when they were established was to allow growth to pay for itself. That's an important term. Growth to pay for, it to, for itself, but also to allow that growth to manage and maintain itself, which is an important power of a community development district because it actually maintains the infrastructure that it, it installs. And I'll get into more detail about that. But in essence, instead of having a homeowners association manage this large project, actually the community development district board manage the project and they have professional engineers and very specific criteria that they must follow. So that's the, the basic of a CDD, what it can do. It can sell tax exempt bonds, it can dedicate facilities, but more importantly, it can assume the maintenance responsibilities. And for both the short term and the long term, that's an important point. Over the next 20 to 30 years when they're building this, but over the next 40 to 60 years, there's gonna be people living in there and landowners and they're gonna have an excellent organization that will maintain the property. They can also levy non ad valorem special assessments against the property, both now and in the future, 20 to 30 years from now, 
potentially when some of the project needs to be redone, the homeowners and the property owners at that time will have the opportunity to have this uh, special district in place for potential future financing for redoing their pavement or whatever it may be in the future. So it can purchase financing, it can construct, and it can do certain public infrastructure improvements. And the optimum word there is public infrastructure improvements. It has to be for the public. So those items more specifically are water, wastewater infrastructure, stormwater, drainage, conservation areas, landscaping, permitting, off-site roadway improvements, and the roadways within the projects. What a CDD can't do, it cannot issue any zoning, it cannot do anything that's inconsistent with what the City of Palm Beach Gardens has approved on this project, it, or your comprehensive plan, your ordinances, or your regulations. It cannot improve any development, redevelopment, or any changes. It is strictly a infrastructure district. It cannot pledge the credit when, when this CDD floats tax-exempt bonds. Those tax-exempt bonds are not against the city, it's against the property, so it will not impact your credit. It cannot affect the rate, the millage rates for the city by any means or matter. It is just an independent district. So the benefits of the CDD, I only have two more slides. The benefits of the CDD, first thing, the first thing which is growth pays for itself as a city, and Palm Beach Gardens growth pays for itself. That increased, fi that increased um, placing the, the infrastructure, the tax exempt bonds, and doing the infrastructure increases the ad valorem property values of the land immediately. To the property owner, the people who ultimately live here, it's a professionally managed infrastructure with guaranteed funding source and a non ad valorem basis. So for example, the community where I live in, we installed water lines several years ago as a special district, and we now have water lines, and that special district is funded for the next, for the next 30 years. That also allows a decreased cost of ownership because tax-exempt financing is actually cheaper than private financing. From the landowner and the developer, it allows them to access to this tax-exempt financing, and also, it is a mechanism to finance this infrastructure. This is a large project and it will be going on for the next 20 to 30 years. So here is the first Board of Supervisors, and many of these names you'll recognize, Rosa Schechter, Daniel Lopez, Eduardo Stern, David Serviansky. Now, you've met all four of those people. Those are the, the primary investors and owners of Landstar Homes. The fifth person who you have not met is their Chief Financial Officer, Virginia. So, the key thing, though, about the project and the, and the uh, Board of Supervisors is two things happen. One, they have to operate in the sunshine, just like you do. It, that is the form that they have to operate in under the sunshine, number one. And number two, the other key item is they have to be, uh, they have to be both now and in the future, they, in the future, the way the board works, the next six years, for the first six years, it's controlled by, the, by this group of people, and there has to be a minimum of 250 homes. At that point, some point after six years, but before 10 years, the entire CDD is transferred over from this group to the property owners and the landowners. So in the future, it allows the residents who live here and the property owners here to, d to uh, decide the future for this project. In essence, that is my quick summary about the CDD. We have worked with your staff. We've worked with your attorney. This is consistent, and we have st consistent with state statutes. It's Chapter 190 in state statutes, and we're requesting your approval this evening. We have our whole team assembled. I didn't introduce our team. I should have. I jumped right into it. We have Mr. Wadraska here from Special District Services. Mr. Pimentel is here from Special District Services. We have an attorney, Dennis Lyle, who specializes in community development districts. We have an attorney, Mr. Seymour, here, and we have our clients. Appreciate your time tonight, and again, we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Um, does anybody have questions? Maria? I Looks do. Looks like you do. Um, on the summary, Page four, page, I'm sorry, page four of the summary, it says the CDD will likely provide a cost savings to the workforce housing units and parcels. <laughs> oh, sorry. And then on the next page, it gives the assessment of $1,800 annually, and that is for 3,250 units. So 
you're saying that the workforce housing people are going to pay the same amount of t in t a levy as the larger, maybe million dollar homes? It was, so, th so the assessment methodology that actually determines that final cost hasn't been done. It's not done until such time that the board is established. However, those rates do fluctuate by the size of the units. We picked 1,800. If you look at similar communities within the area, for example, Abacoa, they have about that number, so we kind of went with the market in that area was the concept. But they do fluctuate based on unit sizes and lot sizes and also the size of retail property. But what you're saying is 1,800 is the max that somebody will be paying? Or we, we, we think so yeah. I don't I can't answer that a hundred percent to you until it's that board has been established and they actually make that final determination but the market really d demand the market is what really what really fo focuses what that pricing may be because it's the most amount that they can float that someone is willing to compensate themselves so, so for example at Abacoa that those numbers are right around between 1200 and 1800 and that's kind of the market but we did do conservative numbers so is it based on square footage or is it based on assessed valuation? Or so it, 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 that will be, again be determined during the assessment methodology, uh, Vice Mayor, but and generally it is done by lot and lot size mm -hmm. and also by square footage. Square footage, right. yeah, yeah. Square, square foot of the commercial size. units. So, for example, the question, the workforce housing would probably be more of a multifamily product, therefore mm -hmm. there's more units per acre, therefore that cost would be less. Less, sure. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, Ken, um, I think you answered my question within your presentation, but the CDD does not affect the city at all or any of our current residents. Just That's correct. It is an independent, it is an independent district. It has no bearing at all within the residents of the city of Palm Beach Gardens, only specifically provides a form of a development uh, tax exempt within the Avenir CDD. Thank you. And just to offer um, a little history here, uh, we have one CD. CDD in our in our community yes. and that's Old Palm and it's doing very well from what I gather and it this makes sense I think uh, from from a strategic point of view yes. so just just let you know okay um, I of course I always have a little bit of concern when I hear CDD because of the nature of a CDD and everything so I'm gonna ask this question I know that I think I know the answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway so that the rest of the um, group here can hear the answer as well. But why did you do a C choose a CDD instead of a 298 district? So we decided, so the special districts, there are a lot, of, there are different forms of special districts, and we decided from the long-term vision of this project over the next 20 or 30 years that it would be best to have our future residents be in control of the community development district. So in the future, they have the opportunity to decide if they want to use this district themselves. And that was really the, the majority reason why we chose it. Okay. And again, I want to, clarify that the from the city's point of view the city property that's going to be dedicated to the city would be excluded right. from any of the and I want that to be on the record yes, as well and I, and I should have made that on the record in fact it's one of my notes in bold any of the property that will be owned by the city of Palm Beach Gardens will not be assessed Now, well, what about, can you please well, explain the economic development sure. um, so the econo parcel? Because obviously that's a little different than the um, right. So the economic parcel is a, is a bit different. It, it will not be assessed to the city of Palm Beach Gardens. However, at a point in time that is transferred to a future user, it will be assessed. Right, based on the conditions that were that um, are. I think it's condition in the 94, 94, if in I remember correctly. 99, correct. I believe. 98. 98. And also to confirm, this is going to be in contracts when people are signing a contract this yes in wording fact, will be in the contract so there's no surprise yes commissioner uh, yeah, council uh, woman that's a great point in fact the Florida statutes very specifically identifies how it is done in contract and I think if you flip to page six of your report it shows how big yep. and bold that it must be on the contracts and it's also recorded within the property so the next future buyer also is alerted to it goes with the land okay. yes ma'am got it okay <laughs> okay no <laughs> Bert wants to know if Brian wants to say anything else because it looks like he wanted to say something he's, he was pacing but I he's think pacing. he sat down sure Brian's pacing right. back and when, forth when back Ken plays lawyer I start to worry but he actually <laughs> got it right <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll keep my smile on 
<laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I don't think we have any other questions for the petitioner. Does staff want to make a presentation as well? Staff has the opportunity. We, we've had the opportunity to review the subject petition, which has been reviewed and vetted thoroughly by not only our DRC committee, but also our finance administrator and our city attorney and all the other staff. We are recommending approval. Uh, I'm glad that the point was made on the city parcels as part of the, uh, the discussion just now. That was the only really the additional point that we wanted to make, that the, that the city parcels that will be de dedicated, which is a significant amount of land, uh, approximately 115 acres, uh, will not be subject to these uh, assessments. assessments. And the economic development parcel, of course, will be subject to Condition 99 in the Avenir Development Order. Staff is recommending approval of Ordinance 17 on first reading. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I do not have any cards on this item. Close my, my notes. I had my notes on my iPad, <laughs> which was in the way. So I'm going to close the public hearing and bring it back for a, dis a vote and or what did I do? There was no oh, there's no public hearing. Okay. I keep forgetting. <laughs> I'm all messed up. Well, even okay. Even well, even I did it anyway. It's so. okay. So it's <laughs> fine. Um, also, we, Ron has a... Uh, I'd just well. like to recognize staff, both Natalie and Joanne. It, it was a mammoth undertaking. It was a lot of work, and they came through like troopers and right down to the wire to get this done. Uh, it's a little different than what they've had to deal with in the past, and they expedited the process and did a fabulous job, and I'm very proud of the work you've done, so thank you. That's nice. Thank you for bringing that up. And I do want, we're on, some of us are short timers, so we do want to see that first site plan, so <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> I can't wait to review it. Uh, Madam Mayor, can okay. I, if you don't mind, can I just, oh, I want to ask one question um, of our city attorney after the review. Um, I just want to make sure, you know, currently now we have a CDD that's going to be in place who we know and are familiar with. Uh, let's say 30 years from now, if our property somehow has to be um, improved in conjunc conjunction with the existing property, all that, there's no way that a future board of this CDD is going to loop us into any of these assessments down the road. I just want to. No, that's correct. They, okay. They can't. We're not part of it. We're not included. Uh, the the city de dedicated parcels, parcels, excuse me, are not part we'll of the city. Always be outside of that. Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. Beautiful. That's all I wanted to hear. And Thank as you. Natalie said, the, the economic development part is subject to condition number ninety nine, which that's understandable. Insulates it for a certain period of time. Yeah, I agree it has with that. Has a cap on it. Right. That's okay. Thank you. And we also have a development order for Avenir, which um, describes that as well, which is a second tool to enforce yes, that same point. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to bring this back <laughs> for a vote and or discussion. Uh, Madam Chair, it's my pleasure to uh, uh, mo make motion to be passed Ordinance 17, 2016 on first reading. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Thank you. You want to see those shovels in the ground? Yeah. We all do. I know you do. I'm sure you do too. Thank you guys. And now we don't, well, we kind of had a res, no resolutions, I don't see. Okay, so items for council action or discussion. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Nobody? No, I just have a question. Um, now that we've got the 1% sales tax, when do we, or is there a place we can find out what projects we have in the pipeline for that? That's a good question because we've been talking about that. <laughs> I'll uh, be bringing that up in the near future. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, city attorney report. Just happy holidays to everybody. That, that, very good. And to you. Did everyone see Max's suit? <laughs> I think it's. I don't think you can miss it. I really think it's fantastic. Room. Stand up. Only a real man like him All can right. bring off that suit. I just want you to know. Great job. Nice. <laughs> he is happy a holidays, everybody. Okay. And happy, happy New Year. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. We're going to go to adjournment. So moved. We have a motion to adjourn? Moved. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Adjourned. Do we have to vote? <laughs> Aye. Aye.